start with this partially drawn rea uh, reaction mechanism that I've, I've got here. So as I mentioned, um, in terms of reaction mechanisms, I'm going to cover how we can add things like our lone pair of electrons. Um, and that's the first thing I'm going to do here. Uh, so we want to add a lone pair onto this nitrogen atom here. Um, and the way to do that is to go to this uh, atom chemical properties button on the left hand toolbar. I can select the button and then select my nitrogen. This would allow, actually allow me to um, edit the valence of my atom if I wanted to. I could change the isotope as well if I wanted to. Um, and in this case, I can also edit the charge and that's actually gonna allow me to display my, um, my lone pairs. So in this case, I, have, uh, I can display the lone pair either horizontally or, um, uh, sorry, horizontally or, or vertically, depending on how, how I want it displayed. So if I select the horizontal uh, lone pair there, I can press okay. And then you can see that my lone pair is attached to my nitrogen now. The next thing that I want to do for this reaction mechanism is to add some curly arrows. And you can see I've already got some here. To do that, um, I'm going to switch to draw mode. So open structure to draw mode. Um, and the tool we want to use is this arc functionality here. If you click the little white triangle just to the right, uh, lower right corner of the arc, um, that will allow us to actually select the uh, degree of curvature that we're looking at. So either 120, 180, 240, 270. Um, it can be a little bit trial and error if you want to get the correct curve. Um, I'm going to start in this case with the 120. And if we want to add an arrow onto the end of our curve, we also need to select the arrow functionality. So now you can see I've got selected my arrow and my curve functionality, and you'll see that my cursor has changed to this plus sign here. So what I can do is I can hover my cursor in the middle of my uh, lone pair, and then I'm just gonna click, and then that's gonna allow me to draw my curve, either curving up or underneath, depending on how I want it to draw. So I'm actually, I'm just gonna undo that, and I'm just gonna go back up the other way so it curves around the correct way. Um, and then I'm just gonna draw that up to, um, my water molecule there. Um, and then if I wanted to add uh, another uh, more deeper curve, I could change the, um, the arc functionality and then I could just draw that second, that second curly arrow in there. So um, that's the way to add curly arrows. Uh, it's really about selecting the degree of curvature on your arc and making sure that you've got this arrow functionality um, selected and then that will allow you to to draw those to draw those arrows in um, and also you need to make sure that you're in draw mode for that if i wanted to add a reaction arrow so different from a straight arrow or curly arrow um, and this will actually be seen elsewhere in our software as a reaction um, what i would need to do is i would need to select the reaction arrow button which is this one here i'm just going to change this to um, a standard uh, straight arrow and what i can do is now I can select my arrow and I can actually just click and drag um, to draw that in place. So click and drag. And you'll see if I do that, you'll see that I could actually point this arrow in any direction. Um, to get my arrow to be defined nicely horizontally, I can actually hold down the shift key on my keyboard. And you can see now that there is actually a snap to functionality. So it is snapping to the horizontal. It is also snapping to the vertical. So this means that you'll always get nice um, nice horizontally or vertically defined arrows and it will snap to at diagonals as well. So that's what we want in terms of uh, drawing our, our arrows. Um, so if you need to line them up, uh, use the shift key to draw and then you can just release and draw. Um, I'm now gonna add an equilibrium arrow as well. Um, and again, I can do the same thing. So click and drag to define the length, um, hold the shift key to find um, the horizontal or the vertical. Um, so I can add my equilibrium arrow in there. If I wanted to line all of my curly arrow, uh, sorry, all of my reaction arrows up, and this goes for the same for lining anything up in the software um, in ChemSketch, I can hold down the shift key and select the elements that I want to align, switch to draw mode, and all of my alignment options are available here. So if I wanted to, I could align them all to the left. I'm just going to press undo. Um, if I want to align them all um, horizontally, I would select the horizontal, uh, sorry, the vertically um, alignment tool. And that's going to line them up nicely so that they're all nicely um, uh, nicely ready for um, uh, in, in our reaction scheme. The last thing we might want to do in terms of this reaction scheme is we may want to define the drawing style. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. 
So I'm going to use my lasso tool to select the entire uh, reaction. So just drag all the way around that. I'm then going to right click on a uh, on a structure and select object properties. And now what we can see here is we have the tools uh, to actually change the properties of our uh, of our drawings. So here I could, for example, increase the bond length in terms of uh, the width that it was drawn out. I can bold that. Um, I've also got separate options for my single, uh, my double, my single, my um, and my single bonds. I can change the way that I want atoms to be displayed. So um, whether I want uh, charges, for example, to be displayed, um, I can also change the color of any atom and any bond. But what we also have available is we have some uh, predefined templates that match journal drawing styles. So for example, if I wanted to set this into ACS style, um, I could simply select the ACS style there and press apply, and then that would automatically define my reaction scheme based on, uh, based on that style. Um, if I wanted to change that, I could change it to something else. So for example, I could change it to RSC and again, press apply. Um, and what you can also do is you can set your style or your preferred style as the default style if you wanted to uh, continue using that every time. If you make any custom changes to these, um, so for example, if you want to have, um, for example, the, um, the valence of your atom displayed, um, you would press show there. Um, if you press save, you can then save that into your style. So um, that would be how you would do that.